Hey everyone, I wanted to tell you this story that occurred when I was a graduate student at the University of California, Irvine. This happened in my first year of the program. It was in 2017. I believe it was the fall of 2017, if I'm not mistaken. So we're talking about seven years ago now. And it's such a memorable story that it stuck with me to this day, obviously, because I'm telling it. But it didn't just happen to me, it actually happened to pretty much my whole cohort, the whole group of other PhD students who started at the same time that I did. And the story is that we were at a seminar. We had these Friday seminars for the first year graduate students in the physics department. And during that seminar, we had one of the longest serving faculty in our department, who we will keep anonymous for this story. But this person, I didn't know much about them other than they got their PhD at Caltech, they were colleagues with people like Richard Feynman and uh, Kip Thorne and new people in the physics community like Eugene Wigner and all the big names, okay? So this is someone who goes way back and has rubbed shoulders with some of the most august members in the discipline. Now this person was supposed to give a talk about their research and these Friday talks were supposed to essentially facilitate connecting first year graduate students with potential PhD advisors. So it was a way for graduate students to get familiar with who was in the department and what kind of research projects were being done. Now this faculty didn't really talk about their research but instead went ahead to kind of disparage us as graduate students. And by disparage, I mean tell us that effectively we kind of made a mistake by coming to UC Irvine and that UC Irvine graduates in physics don't typically go on to have stellar careers in physics and that we basically have no shot of getting a tenure track faculty position at a respected university one day. Now you can imagine as a first year PhD student in physics, I was a bit shocked. I think a lot of us were very shocked. I think the vice chair of the department at the time who was sitting in the room was also very shocked. Or maybe not. Maybe he was expecting that. Obviously, it stung because just imagine someone who is really accomplished in your discipline telling you, you basically have no chance of joining me up here because you go to this school and I went to this school and people from this school or where we currently are right now, they don't go on to have great careers. And so that, that kind of stuck with me. And... I'm sad to say that while it was harsh and perhaps even painful for us to hear, it's not to say that the, the, this person didn't have any nuggets of truth in what they were saying. Perhaps the delivery was just a bit crass and unprofessional, but the sad truth of the matter is that academia has the issue that most of the faculty that hold the positions, the tenure-track positions in universities in the United States typically come from, unsurprisingly, the top tier university programs. So we're talking programs within the Ivy Leagues, the, the MITs of the world, Stanford's, Caltech's, uh, Berkeley's, those kinds of schools. And I'm not here to disparage those programs or the people who, who went into them. I'm just saying that it's just kind of a known fact that getting your PhD from one of those universities grants you a higher chance of securing a tenure-track role at some point in your career. Now, it's not a complete guarantee, of course, there are no guarantees, but it does set you up to have access to the network of professionals and alumni and current faculty at those top-tier institutions. And because of that, it feels as if that, to me, as someone, in my opinion, it almost invalidates or makes a student not want to get a PhD unless you can get into one of those programs, which I didn't know, okay? I, I was very happy to get into UC Irvine. It was the only graduate school in physics that I got into from UC Merced, and I thought it was a great step for me to go to UC Irvine and pursue my, my physics PhD. As an undergraduate, I really had no clue that the disparity really existed in terms of faculty at universities in terms of where they got their PhD. I, I had never really conceived of that idea. And in hindsight, it feels obvious that, of course, schools would really want to have 
faculty that get their PhDs from these prestigious universities because they want to sort of augment their own prestige factor by hiring people from prestigious places. And it only kind of makes sense. But as someone looking back on it now, it really makes me pause when, when people ask me, should I get my PhD? Because one of the questions I want to ask is, where do you plan on going? And is that university known for producing faculty at quality universities? Which is an unfortunate, I think, reality of the situation, but it is a reality. Though, I will say, the PhD advisor I had at UC Irvine, he has had previous students before me who got their PhD under him, and they've gone on to have faculty, tenure-track faculty roles. So it by no means was impossible for me to do that if I so chose. But I think I realized that to stay in academia requires you to play the game of publish or perish, as in publish a ton of papers or just watch your academic career perish in front of you. And while I can write papers, I have published two papers as a first author, I didn't particularly enjoy doing it. And when I came to realize that the job was going to mostly involve publishing papers, writing grants, asking for money to fund my research, I got very discouraged and I felt that I didn't want to play the game anymore. I just felt that this is a game that if I just sacrificed parts of myself to give myself the best chance of staying in academia, then I will be very unhappy. And like, for example, I don't think I'd be able to do YouTube anymore because I felt I would feel like this would be a waste of time to, you know, it'd be a waste of time to be making YouTube videos when I could be writing grant proposals or writing papers or doing research. And that's not how I really wanted to turn out. And that added with the fact that academia has this this sort of issue with elitism, if you want to call it that. It just re made me realize I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have my work cut out for me and I could realistically end up in the next 15 years in a position where I still don't have a permanent role in academia and I'm in my 40s and who knows where I'll be at life, but I don't think I would be, have been happy. Anyways, the point is, I think if people do want to get their PhD, this is something that unfortunately has to be taken into consideration. And the thing is, it's not all about the university per se. It, it's, it's mostly tied to the department because there are some schools that you may not think are powerhouses, but for certain departments they are. So for example, maybe like a place like UT Austin or University of Washington or University of Wisconsin Madison are top tier physics programs to go to, but perhaps aren't maybe known for in general outside of maybe physics as a as a great physics place to go to. Um, I'm not saying they're bad schools. I'm just saying that I in my mind before I got into academia, I never really thought about UT Austin or University of, uh, University of Wisconsin Madison as you know really amazing schools as opposed to places like Harvard or, or Stanford or something like that. But they are they're really great programs for physics. University of Chicago is another great example of a top tier physics program. UC Santa Barbara is another good example of a, of a really prestigious physics program. So my point is that you really have to, to consider the department and who is in the department and what's the kind of research you really want to go into and pursue. And if an academic career is really what you want, because I think if you do know well in advance, unlike I did, what you want ultimately out of your physics career, you can take and make decisions that benefit you earlier in your career that, that will benefit you in the long run. So with that, that's the end of this video rant, whatever you want to call it, story time. I have been sitting on this story for a while and I wanted to release it a couple of years ago, but I, I decided against it for some reason. But I figure now that I'm no longer really in academia and I'm not at UC Irvine, there's no harm in talking about it now. And so I hope that gives you an insight as to the kinds of situations you may find yourself in graduate school. And I hope that you will have a very supportive environment wherever you may go and that you can be a part of possibly changing the way things are because things could be better. And I'm no longer in academia, so I can't be changing it from the inside, but maybe someone else will. So uh, with that, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate everyone taking the time out of their day to watch this video and all the videos on my channel. It's been a blast to 
get back into making YouTube at the rate that I've been doing it. It's just been exhilarating, and I haven't felt that way about YouTube since, almost since I started doing this regularly, like six years or seven years ago. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in another video.